Well, EMF is very real for a lot of people. A lot of people are very sensitive to these frequencies. What we're seeing is water responding and then finding ways to self-heal. And I constantly see that. Water will have a shock and react in a big way. And then if you keep letting it melt and freeze, you see improvement. So I think that we So what can the, we proactively do yeah. if people are living in an area that has 5G, maybe mm -hmm. even has routers, and maybe they're in an apartment building, Wi-Fi, everything's running through them? Do you know what I've actually observed is that um, when you get magnesium oil and you rub it on your body, your mm -hmm. skin, mm -hmm. it actually does seem to create some kind of a barrier. Shield. Shield. Oh, interesting. What about if you take magnesium internally or does it have to be external? You can do both. I mm -hmm. found that the external seems to really kind of create a shield that can last for quite a long time. Interesting. Yeah. So I would say that that would be something that you could definitely do that's good for you mm -hmm. um, and is easy. I also think that um, understanding water and understanding the bio water, the water inside of your body mm -hmm. and how it um, is intelligent. I think that sometimes we limit water with our own kind of um, limited understanding of it. Mm -hmm. But I think if we understood that water um, constantly st seeks health and its purpose really is to improve things, it's always finding ways to So it to has heal. your back. It's got your back. It's got your back. It totally okay. Does. <laughs> and one of the surprises you found also was that you were able to read the crystal structure of things like egg whites. Yes. And juice. Let's yes. talk about that for a moment. Well, I was wondering what would be the most naturally informed water on the planet. And so I always thought it would be amniotic fluid. Mm -hmm. And since that's not readily available, mm -hmm. the next best thing was egg white. And it's quite good because eggs are in little containers. Mm -hmm. So I found that when you crack an egg open, um, the egg white or egg albumin is kind of in two parts, the gloopy gelatinous part and then the thin kind of more saliva-like part. Mm -hmm. When you freeze the thin saliva-like part, what you see in fresh, free-range, happy hen eggs is these beautiful sort of um, very complex patterns and there's six of them that I've named. And what we see in caged hen eggs, it can only form two of those patterns and they're the two most rudimentary. In standard farmed eggs? Yes. Yeah, in factories, factory, factory eggs. eggs. Mm -hmm. And so what was interesting, because I was inspired by a man called Luke Montanua who did something which is kind of known as DNA teleportation. Well, I was thinking, well, what if I just put a free range egg beside a caged hen egg and see if information is exchanged. Will one affect the other or will nothing happen? And so I, I did that and I left them overnight. And because I've done thousands of these, I know they always form the same pattern. So mm -hmm. it's not consciousness affecting the eggs. Mm -hmm. these, these are very repeatable patterns. And so I'd never seen more than two patterns in cage 10 eggs. But after I did the crystallography of having the free range egg beside the cage 10 egg, overnight the cage 10 egg started to form incredible patterns. It improved and the free range egg stayed beautiful, it wasn't degraded. But when I shared that on social media, everyone was like, oh yeah, that's cool, but what if you surround it by like bad eggs, so to speak? So I did that twice. I put a free range egg in the middle, I did controls, and I surrounded it by caged hen eggs, all from the same batch. And what we saw, and we left them overnight, what I saw was that there was healing by proximity. The caged hen eggs that were the closest to the free range egg had all drastically improved to look just like free range eggs. The ones further away had improved, but not as much, and, and this happened both times I did it. So what we're really seeing is that it's very similar to the one drop of uh, blessed water into a giant kind of ocean. It makes a difference. So if you want to look at it in human terms, if we start to heal ourselves, we naturally heal others. My teacher in India, he said some of the greatest saints that have ever walked the planet and the most beautiful people that have been here, they're like vessels of divine love. And their energy has reached and healed people 
that they will never meet because the energy has traveled so far across the world. And I think that this beautiful reality that we're seeing in eggs, which of course- It's amazing. What an amazing story. And mm -hmm. it, I mean, it just shows in living patterns entanglement. Yeah. Tangle, entanglement on kind of a fundamental material level. Absolutely. Have you talked with Dean Radin and some of these people in the fields of consciousness and entanglement? It seems like water should be part of that story. Oh, I, it is part of the story. It, it is part of the story. Mm -hmm. It ties in with Rupert Sheldrake's morphic Oh, absolutely. Fields. I absolutely agree with you.